All right, talking about the 2000. No, people said stop yelling in these videos. Why do banks lend money? We've talked about this a lot. The real reason here is they lend money because they can make money through interest. They borrow money from you, they lend that money out at a higher rate, and then they pay you off and they scrape off $3,000 every time. That's why they lend money. So if the bank can lend to a bunch of people, then they're going to get that money back. So if they lend $100,000 to eight people, that means $800,000 back plus the interest on top of that. So the more they loan to, the more money they make. Now, going into the economic crash, because they want to loan to more people. More loans means more money, but they're restricted in how many loans that they can make. So they, they lobby the government. They persuade the government under Clinton and then under George Bush to, hey, pull back some of these regulations. So it's Democrats and Republicans involved in this. Pull back the regulations so we can lend more money. That's going to help people, right? They can buy houses. Yeah, but some of these people shouldn't be buying houses. They don't have the money to do this. Anyway, the restrictions and rules are pulled back. And so free lending, free sending the money out to the economy. And so it's awesome for the banks because more lend, lending, more borrowers means more money coming back to them. It's awesome. They're making a lot of money. Now, the reality is because they didn't have regula regulations and restrictions, they were loaning money to people that should not have gotten the loans. They were doing a lot of things, the banks and the investors, they should not have been doing. They're really free and fast with the money. And it's going and it's going and it's going. But the bank knows what's up. The bank realizes. Is, hey, we signed these papers. We loaned money to people that they shouldn't have leading up to the 2000 economic crisis. They know the money that's coming in. They mo know that they, the people are defaulting. They loan money to people that can't pay back and they're not paying back. And so the bank realizes, hey, all these loans that we have, what we're going to do is going to take them all. We're going to box them up and throw all these thousands of loans together and then sell it to an investor. Package them all together. We'll sell it to an investor. Boom, pow, good. Glad we got rid of that crap because people weren't paying and he doesn't really know any wiser. They can, we're just going to take our money and get out of town. So what's happening now as this thing grows and gets out of control, because remember, laws and regulations have been removed. So instead of you paying the bank back, you're basically paying back investors. Like, why did investors get involved in this? We'll talk about it in a second. So the investors are making a lot of money. It's pretty awesome for them. A lot of people were investing in this business. Why did they get involved? Well, remember, once banks stop getting their money back, the banks go under, people lose money. You get how that works, right? And so the investors are going to go down. The banks are going to go down when money stops flowing back. Banks loan money to new businesses. New businesses create jobs. But if you don't have banks, if the money evaporates, you're not going to have jobs and you're going to crash the economy. People spend money. Investors spend money. They send money to stores. This all happens with the banks. Banks stimulate the economy. Banks loan money to factories, businesses, get them started, get them moving. And then that creates jobs, people working. It's awesome. But if the banks don't exist, if the investors don't exist, if the money is gone, that money doesn't go to the factory. The factory can't grow. The factory has to lay off workers. The bookstore has to close down. The other factory has to close down. The supermarket has to close down because the bank's gone. They can't borrow money anymore. They can't borrow money anymore. They can't borrow their employees. And that crashes the economy. So I'm kind of going all over the place. But here, who is the blame for destroying the economy? Is it the people that borrowed the money that didn't deserve to borrow the money? Possibly. You shouldn't take out a $200,000 loan if you can't pay for it. Is it the bank's fault? Because the bank shouldn't have given a person a $200,000 loan if they can't pay for it. So they're both guilty in this situation. You shouldn't have signed up for the loan and the bank shouldn't have given you the loan. Now, necessarily, you'd say, like, all this could have been prevented if the government would have regulated these guys and said, hey, don't do that. Or if there would have been some sort of penalty. Who is the borrow borrowers of the banks? Well, guess what? In the end, our government decides to side with the banks. And... That's just the way it is. Let's let's talk a little bit more about the 2008 financial crisis. Remember, a small bank loans you money, you buy a house. It's pretty simple. Now, imagine that there's thousands of banks around America, and they're lending to thousands and thousands and thousands of loaners, uh, uh, borrowers. Not that crazy, not that complicated. There's a bunch of banks in your town, and every one of those banks is bar loaning money to all the people, and all those people borrow that money to build their house. Not that crazy, as long as the people that are borrowing the money to build their house are paying it back. We run into problems when people don't pay back. There's another level to the craziness. So investors and pension plans want in on this because it's a pretty good deal. You, you're getting your house. The bank is making money by loaning to you. It's a pretty solid, consistent business plan. It's worked for years. Now, investors want to make money. They just got burnt by the dot-com crisis. They got burnt by the new economy. They're looking to invest. They want to invest in new companies, new factories, the internet. It didn't work. They need something safer. They need a better return. They look at the banks. Banks have been loaning money to people to buy houses for years. It's solid. It's safe. And so the investors now, without any regulation restrictions, say, hey, let's get in on that. 
thousands of banks, thousands of borrowers. Let's jack it up to tens of thousands of banks and tens of thousands of borrowers, hundreds of thousands of banks and a hundred thousand of borrowers. And that will help the investors make money. That'll help your pension or retirement plans end up making money. So everyone now is flooding into this unregulated market, which never had existed before that our government under the Clinton administration with a lot of the rollback and some proactive moves by the government to say, make more loans, make more loans, make more loans pushing the economy, not that the investors needed any reason to do it, not that the banks needed any reason to do it, but they were all complicit. The government was working with the banks to do this, to make this mess happen. So it looks on paper, hey, it's smart. Investors investing in houses, why not? So you got borrowers, you got all these small banks. So the bank, the borrowers are paying the small banks, but technically you're not doing that anymore. The small banks have all sold the ownership of the loan to an even bigger bank. So when you were paying off your loan that you took from the bank down the street, this is going to be a long video. I apologize. So you borrowed money from the bank down the street. You're paying off your house. Actually, the bank down the street sold your loan up front to get quick cash to a bigger bank. So now you're paying your loan to a bigger bank. You and thousands of other people are paying this bigger bank that you didn't even know had your loan. They bought the loans from the small banks. So you're paying the small banks. Wrong. The small banks sold your loan for upfront quick cash. The bank no longer has to worry. Oh, what if he's going to pay off this loan or not? 30 years, he made a fault. Well, the bank now is off scot-free. Their hands are clean. They don't have to worry anymore. They got the quick cash. They're moving on. Now you're going to pay the investors. Then the big bank says, we can do bigger. And so they take all these loans and they package them and they sell that to an even bigger bank who pays them a big lump sum so they don't have to worry anymore. And this thing just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And the entire country or the world is now invested in the housing market. What used to be a bank and you is now the entire world is in control of these loans. Do you think a guy in China knows whether or not you're paying your mortgage or not? No, he doesn't. Do you think a guy in France knows if you in North Carolina in your small town are paying your loan every month? No, because he has control of thousands and thousands and thousands of loans. He doesn't know exactly what's happening and what's exactly happening is you're not paying your loan. He thinks he's making money off thousands and thousands of loans, but if he actually opens up the book, the box and looks inside, he realizes, hey, no one's paying these loans back. No one's paying each month. And that's the problem. So the small bank sold to a big bank, the big bank sold to a bigger bank. Eventually we've got the entire world is now invested in bad loans. It started, remember, with banks wanting to get more loans because more loans means they make more money. And so they started giving loans to people that didn't need loans. Did they do that because they were evil? Maybe. Did they do it because the government told them to? Yes. Did they do it because the government allowed them to? Yes. So government, banks, investors, all involved in this racket. Not very many innocent people. And still, there are a lot of people who took out loans that shouldn't have. Everyone is guilty. There is blame to be laid everywhere. So the global investors, some of them are smart and realize, hey, I've got all these thousands and thousands of home loans. I can't really keep track of them. What happens if people stop paying them back? You know what I could do? What if I insure this investment, this giant box of money? What if I insure this box filled with loans? What if they don't pay? What, maybe someone will sell me insurance on it. You know, if they pay me back, awesome. Global investors make money. If they don't, I'll buy insurance on it. I'll pay a monthly premium just in case the day ever happens where this thing goes into, turns into a garbage bucket, then they'll pay me back and I'm protected. Well, that's a disaster. We'll talk about that in a second. So again, small banks loan to you, you buy a house. Well, what happens when you stop paying back your loan? All that money in the box starts to disappear. All that money that was retirement pension, that was investment, all that money where we sold, the economy is growing, growing, and growing. Well, the reality is it's not because if anyone looks in the box, the economy is not doing as well as it's supposed to because on the very micro level, the people aren't paying back their loans. But the guy in China that owes, that controls 10,000 loans, he doesn't know if you or your neighbor are paying it back or not. You're not looking at the details. They're not looking through thousands and thousands of papers and looking at every monthly statement. That would be the job of the bank down here. The bank would look and see, are they paying every month? Are they paying every month? Guess what? The small bank's no longer involved. They got out of town fast. They knew you weren't paying, but they threw it off to this guy and that guy threw it off. It's a game of hot potato. <laughs> Oh, what happens is when they were paying back, it was awesome, but you're not paying back anymore. But guess what? The global investor's fine because now AIG, the insurance policy kicks in. Oh, these people are defaulting on their loans. I'm not getting the money. Well, good thing I got this pile of garbage loans insured. So now AIG is on the hook. 
And AIG is one of the largest insurance companies in the world. And when they've got to pay all this, when they're on the hook, guess what? They're going to go bankrupt. And it's not just, oh, well, just some insurance company. This insurance company insured the retirement plans of most Americans. They insured the life insurance policy. 88 million customers. Life or small businesses, when they go down, all these other companies that they were supporting were going to go with it. People's life savings were about to be destroyed because the insurance company insured a stupid product. So they insured the, so it's basically just a giant bomb. They can't pay the insurance. They can't pay any of this. So someone's got to swoop in here and save it. When the banks go, you know how all that goes. When the banks go, the grocery store doesn't have money. When the money disappears and when the grocery store doesn't have money, they can't buy food from the farmers. And if the farmers can't sell food, then food literally just disappears. Like this isn't just all the money's gone. We're talking about the entire economy from the milk on the shelves at the grocery store disappears because of this crazy scheme of lending and borrowing and investors and selling loans to everyone else that the government unregulated, but also encouraged. This is not necessarily, people are gonna say, oh, it's supply side economics. This is what you get when you do laissez-faire. This is not necessarily laissez-faire. It is, it is that the government, it's a worst case scenario. The government is not involved, but the government is also involved encouraging and incentivizing the wrong thing. A lot of these loans were supported by the government. And so the people that were making these bad loans, the people giving out bad loans, they knew that if they gave out all these bad loans, that the government was going to have to bail them out. And so they did a lot of crazy things. So the government is definitely part of the problem. People want to blame the businesses and the banks and the loans and the investors. Yes. But you also have to involve the government. They all were in it together. Probably the most innocent was the fool that took out a $200,000 loan that he couldn't afford. They were probably the most innocent of the villains in this situation of the 2008 economic crisis. And then it all collapses and it all falls apart. That's your 2008 economic crisis. And in the end, so we know that the banks did bad. We know that the insurance companies did the wrong thing. We know that the government was complicit. And we know that the probably... The most innocent are A, the people that didn't take out loans, and B, even the people that took out bad loans. They're probably the people who should be helped out. But instead, the government helps out the people who were knowingly involved in the problem. The government bails out the insurance companies. The government bails out the banks. And the government does not bail out the innocent people.